We still got these lingering questions about the economy and consumer demand. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. It's a treat to have you with us as we look at all things that are ag related. I want to encourage you to like these videos, subscribe to the videos by clicking the bell icon down below and share these videos with others as well. Sure appreciate all the help you've been providing in that regard. Continue to grow at a very rapid pace thanks to your help. Well, today I'm calling on Joe Camp of Comstock Investments. We're going to take a look at the market activity that we saw on Tuesday. Usually Joe and I talk on Wednesdays, but because there was so much going on today on a Tuesday, I thought maybe, Joe, we'd better talk today instead and kind of unravel what all took place here uh, during the market session on the first trading day of October. Man, there's a lot to consider here. Uh, it was an action-packed day to start out this month. We have stuff going on in the Middle East. We have the Longshoreman strike going on. Uh, maybe new trades being put on with the first quarter or the first day of the new quarter. Explain what you could observe anyway. I'll try to be concise about what is a huge list of items all of a sudden in this market because we can rewind in previous weeks uh, conversing about how relatively quiet it had gotten. It had gotten to be a trade that was settling into harvest and to think about all of these outside factors that we're going to talk about and, and, and that were mentioned already with mi the Middle East, uh, Iran involved in an even bigger way with missiles being launched reportedly now into Israel. Uh, we have the uh, recent ground invasion from Israel into Lebanon, the growing conflict, yet like we've seen so many weeks before, oil futures really not responding in a, a, a big bullish way. Instead, starting this week mostly lower, today starting off lower and then quickly reversing higher when we had that actual threat and then uh, uh, carry forward of the Iran, uh, Iranian attacks on Israel. Now we've seen uh, Iran retaliate against Israel before, but only uh, after throwing up a couple of hundred missiles as, as serious as that of course is, uh, they backed off and uh, things quickly settled down is that what we're going to see here? You cross your fingers that we could find uh, no f a further spread, but unfortunately, that's not what uh, has been priced into this market uh, this last several uh, hours of this session, which when you had the cr crude turnaround, that helped the soybeans off of their lows. Uh, corn was, was already firm behind yesterday's positive close and the strength of wheat this morning, which had the fundamental motivation of higher Russian prices. So a lot more to talk about just uh, than what we're hearing from our farmers, which is also important about how this harvest is progressing. Want more? Sign up today for our premium content. You'll receive our reports twice a day, plus every morning, an in-depth market analysis with Eric Relf. Every afternoon, you'll receive our daily podcast with Marlon Bowling. The first month is only $1. You know, I found it was interesting when we started out the trading day. Uh, there was so much talk about the longshoreman strike. Uh, today's the first day of that. And they did indeed go on strike. I'm hearing anywhere from 45 to 50,000 longshoremen on the Atlantic coast and the Gulf coast. So it covers everything from Maine to Texas. And um, the Dow went down over 400 points early in the trading session. However, by the time that the uh, grain markets wrapped up their trading, I saw where the Dow had bounced back and it was back to about unchanged, I believe, uh, by the time the grains closed up. So it's interesting how that snapped back. We had big volatility in the oil markets. We had big volatility in the precious metals. So there seems to be a lot of shuffling around between all the different markets here, Joe. Yeah, and we can come back to the stock market when we bring up the livestock and cattle as sensitive as they've always been uh, here, uh, having some help when the stocks did rebound like they uh, had earlier this session. Uh, so overall, we've got the outside mar market environment uh, more supportive. Now that's barring the higher dollar index up about a half a point, a moderately uh, a higher move on the safe haven uh, type bullishness that's also expressed in the metals uh, as we have that Middle East unknown. But 
right now it's a, a, a real shift in what you'd think the overall sentiment can be as the speculative money shifts back uh, less bearish, certainly, in the broader commodity space and in the grains. Uh, definitely, we continue to observe these speculators covering short positions and even adding some fresh long interest into the market lately. But you mentioned, yeah, now the longshoremen's strike. This is one of those hiccups that all of a sudden can come at a time when otherwise, well, unfortunately, uh, uh, for the toll that this hurricane has had, recent moisture in part linked uh, to these storms has uh, moved up the projections for the Mississippi River flow. We're entering into that busiest time of the season for shipments. And you talk about the Atlantic coast, that's going to be important. You talk about any type of meats, uh, certainly uh, clothing, cotton, we can connect it to so many markets, fertilizers, etc. The grains, we know how important the Mississippi Gulf is, say 42% of the year-to-date uh, grain exports moving uh, from down there. It's a huge issue. We don't know if we'll take the cue of the Canadians and we'll have government intervention here really rather quickly or if there will be a deal or not. But a prolonged uh, closure, of course, would spell trouble for grains at exactly, again, the wrong time. I did notice that uh, the big winners seem to be the wheat trade here on a Tuesday. Uh, it's kind of coming out of nowhere and, and almost taking a leadership role here this week. How come? You can talk about wheat as being such an, an international market. And, and now, too, of course, corn and beans are. But uh, as you look at the trading volume and the interplay in particular between the U.S. market and the Russian prices, which were notably higher here these last couple of days, uh, along with the French market, and, and they're dealing with the lower crop because of drought, that true as well. Back in the, the Black Sea region with drought still persistent there uh, as they booked last year's smaller crop now after two big years. So it's a transition towards a more a bullish leaning fundamentally uh, that was sparked this morning, I think, again, notably by the higher Russian prices out there. Well, you were uh, talking about the, the meat markets here, and I, I want to focus on this for a little bit. The uh, cattle market kind of came back. It showed a little, little bit of resilience on the uh, fed cattle market here. But um, how important is it that we hold these levels where we are right now? Are we at a crossroads right now? We've uh, been trending back higher, and you are at a point where we're back to testing recent highs on the chart, which could potentially uh, face some pushback. And then uh, thinking a lot uh, back about the seasonality of the market last year and uh, the timing of a, an eventual top for many of these contracts now uh, back last September. Well, now we're into the month of October. We're past the summer season. We've still got these lingering questions about the economy and consumer demand. Uh, it could be that after the recent strength, at least, uh, we see things slow down a bit heading into the fall. But at the same time, we don't change quickly these dynamics that have been bullish, which is just the overall short fed cattle numbers. Um, and uh, the, what is generally still, despite the worry, resilient uh, demand and, and what has been resilient demand for some time. Uh, in the face of recession calls and, and everything else. So, you know, I still want to kind of talk about it both sides to say if we were to have another push higher and we were to continue in this trend, uh, well, is that still now what we look for to uh, really stand ready and be um, actively protecting these moves higher if we get them uh, following up these next few weeks? You know, if you look at a, a daily bar chart between feeder cattle and the live cattle, uh, do you think the feeder cattle market has more catching up to do to the upside or not? It would seem that way. You know, you could argue that it was uh, previously uh, running faster in a way that, you know, allowed it to correct a little bit more historically um, uh, towards a, 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 a more comfortable equilibrium. But right now we don't see any backing up off of those cash markets like we've had uh, in response uh, to the outside market concerns and all that's going on with the live cattle market. I, I, I don't see the same uh, type of uh, uh, weakness um, and variability in the feeders as much uh, with the demand still out there. 
you, you got to think there is that room going forward for the feeders to catch up on something like this, but it wasn't today, at least like the live cattle firmer on most of the feeder contracts. Well, I know on our premium services, uh, you know, we have additional um, market commentaries and and recommendations that come out in the mornings. And uh, I think occasionally you contribute to uh, some of those comments on there too. Uh, I know the Comstock team has made some recommendations here over the past few days. Um, are they looking at maybe doing more in the future or, or do you think that when, uh, maybe give it a little room to run here a little bit? Both, you know, in the sense that we've currently employed a scale up type approach to marketing. Uh, we think that prices can still be higher later. Uh, we're also, uh, wanting to move to reward the rally, to respect what has to be some movement of cash bushels here at harvest for whatever reason, whether it's um, uh, the weighing of cost of storage, uh, the general logistics of it, uh, the space, of course, uh, generally on farm relative to that cost. So much uh, that goes into it. Basis right now is a big talking point. We've brought that up before, how we outline these different alternatives and then clarify, hey, it's regionally very different and we need to know about your individual situation and go from there. But in general, I would say, yes, we're trying to make some sales here and uh, think that the market can go uh, higher yet. When I have these conversations with farmers, it's important because you are talking uh, both sides of it and we are trying to hedge uh, when we see price strength and we can um, uh, manage risk that way if it, if it, if it's warranted. But when I talk to farmers, I'm saying that yes, we've had certain sales targets hit, uh, but it's not bearish of us, right? If, uh, we have less than a majority of our new crops sold and, uh, still a lot left to market here in, uh, what could potentially be higher prices still to come. Well, you are located right in the center of the corn belt <clears throat> where it would appear that the corn is probably as good as anywhere in the country. Um, from your clients that you're getting feedback from, I mean, are the yields about like what you had expected to hear at this point or are they trending better or worse or not? Uh, about as good as you'd expect, uh, to have such lofty, uh, in, in, projections coming in, uh, you have a lot to live up to in the early going. It's mostly done that. Uh, I think. Two things can be true, though, with our state yield, with the national yield as a whole as well. And that's that uh, this is, by and large, together, a huge crop, a record national yield average. But it's not uh, necessarily going to have to end up as high uh, in, in in terms of yield as we've seen in previous reports. That could fit with the grain stocks report that we had for last year's crop inventory checkup yesterday, the general trend can be of tightening balance sheets, even if we end up with these big record yields that can be smaller than what we saw uh, last time. And that brings up now uh, the, the look towards next week already and the monthly uh, crop production and WASD reports. But it's a big crop. I will say uh, you look at state averages like uh, approaching a quarter percent through the weekend. Of course, you have uh, big, long states, uh, Illinois, uh, a lot of that done in the south, but only, you know, one in 10 fields in the in the middle and, and heading on up north. Uh, this week, as clear as it looks, though, will be one of the busiest weeks of the year. Uh, and you have October, normally farmers averaging out uh, uh, in modern history, taking out about 12% of the corn crop per week. I think it's going to be a lot more than that, the way this weather looks, uh, probably the rest of even this month as it's trended for so many this summer, um, barring down south and, and still the hurricane season being open, which is another subject. Uh, but it's really rolling forward and, 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 and positive in many areas, not to uh, discount the otherwise variability too in other places that we think could lead to those um, incremental adjustments lower still in future reports. And again, I would encourage our viewers to uh, go ahead and go in the comment section down below this video and uh, go ahead and 
post what you're finding out in the field. Are you happy? Are you disappointed? What kind of yields are you finding out in your fields? And make sure you state what part of the country you're in. And that way you can all kind of compare notes with each other and see, um, uh, you know, how they compare compared to what the average gas was. So once again, just go down below and uh, go ahead and click in the comments there and, and enter your own data and uh, we'll see how it fits with everybody else. Joe, it's been great to talk with you again. Thanks for all the information. I appreciate it. Joe Camp of Comstock Investments with us. And for producer Brianne Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. We'll catch you next time here on the Comstock Channel. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget, you can also find us on Facebook and Tech Talk as well. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial, and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.